in the second year of marrying the school beauty. I regretted it. My wife is always in meetings. The kind of two-person meeting with the general manager in the office. And the kind where the curtains are drawn. The most embarrassing thing is, everyone in the company knows, everyone laughs behind my back that I am a big fool. Finally, I signed the divorce papers, took out my phone and called a number I hadn't contacted for a long time. Tell the old man, I want to go home, not to long. Countless luxury cars came face to face, like a lawn dragon. My wife was called into the office by the general manager for a meeting, and she also pulled down the window blinds. There was a lot of discussion in the company's small group. What kind of meeting can only be held by two people? Those who understand will understand. With Willow's enchanting face, any man would be moved. Okay, everyone stop teasing. What's wrong with saying a few words? Anyway, the big fool is not in the group, he is in the group. Colleagues glanced at me one after another, some sympathized, but more laughed. I was very upset, my wife has explained more than once, asking me not to misunderstand, and not to care about rumors dot dot but this time, I want to go in and see what's going on. I walked towards the office with big strides, and my colleagues surprised eyes followed me closely. The male secretary stopped me at the door. His tone was unquestionable. President he has very important things and no one is allowed to disturb. The word important in his mouth was pronounced weirdly. I didn't want to talk to him more. I pushed the door, and my wife was sitting on the sofa. Her face was still a little red. George, what are you doing? The general manager turned his back and walked back to his own desk, accusing me. Don't you know to knock on the door first? With this attitude, you still want a raise. I clenched my fist and then loosened it, expressionless. Yes, you have a good attitude. You call everyone that. The general manager was furious and threw the thermos cup on the table at me. I dodged by turning my body, staring at my wife. Willow, come out. In the company's lounge, Willow looked at me with guilty eyes and scratched my palm. Honey, I'm about to be promoted, can you stop making trouble? I shook off her hand and asked coldly, why did you lie to me? She trembled and lowered her head. I didn't lie to you. I raised my hand to hold her chin, forcing her to look up and meet my eyes. You always say he has no feelings for you, so why did his crotch swell up as if he had placed a watermelon in it? She pursed her lips, her face somewhat blank. To be honest, I'm really tired. Instead of waiting silently here for her to make up reasons, I might as well speak directly. Willow, let's get a divorce, lying and deception. There are only zero times and countless times. I can't believe you anymore. She smoothed her hair behind her ears. Yes, I lied to you. The general manager does have feelings for me. Lying is just to avoid unnecessary misunderstandings. A woman's flowering period is very short. If you insist on divorce, then how can you compensate me for the time I wasted on you? She finally spoke her mind, from dating to marriage in college. Being with me was just a waste of time in her eyes, I knew before that she was very strong. Whether in the student union or various activities, she must be the most dazzling existence. Even now that she has entered the workplace, she is not hesitant to use this method to get promoted quickly. Now, I can't guess how much truth and how much falsehood is in her words. George, apart from being poor, you are indeed a quite perfect man, whether in appearance or figure. So, I'm willing to give you another chance. You tell me, are you serious about wanting a divorce? She hooked her lips with a faint smile on her face. It's the same look that she's got me all figured out. She made an unforgivable mistake, but still wanted to give me a chance. Three letters suddenly appeared in my mind. Pua. I'm serious. I looked up at her, my expression serious. Rather than living in fear every day that you'll cheat on me, it's better to break up when we say so. After all, without me, you'd be more free. Her smile slowly froze on her face. She observed me for a while before she lightly opened her red lips. George, you don't have to be so narrow-minded. I shook my head speechlessly, insisting on getting a divorce certificate today. The general manager pushed open the door of the lounge, walked in with his head held high. Willow, divorce him. He's always so arrogant. I'll talk to HR. And you can take the director's position. And we'll go celebrate with champagne tonight. His eyes became brighter as he looked at Willow. And he naturally put his arm around her shoulder. If he doesn't cherish you, there are plenty of men who do. Don't be afraid. I'll support you. 
and she didn't dodge, but nodded gratefully. I really laughed out of anger, she suddenly became so strange. Since you gave me the ring, then I will give you all my loyalty and passion. This promise was made by her. It turns out that people do change. Looking at the general manager's provocative eyes, although I had already decided to divorce, my possessiveness began to act up. Willow, as long as you slap him and resign to leave with me, I'll pretend that today's events never happened. I looked at her expectantly, as long as she's willing, I'll let bygones be bygones. And it's almost our third year of marriage. The agreed deadline is almost up, so I could also her home. The general manager seemed to have heard some big joke, laughing so hard that he bent over. Willow frowned, a hint of disgust in her eyes. George, why can't you grow up? Do you know the market value of this company? Do you know how much my annual salary starts at when I become a director? Forget it. Let's divorce. Your vision is too short-sighted. We are not from the same world. Hearing her words, my heart cooled by half. The general manager clapped his hands in agreement and said with a smile, Let's go. I'll take the two old people to the Civil Affairs Bureau. I grabbed Willow's wrist and pulled her over. The general manager directly moved his hands, pushing me against the wall. You little fool, try touching her again. I grabbed his collar, tightened my grip, and he was instantly pressed against the wall by me, as long as we're not divorced. She's still my wife, why can't I touch her? And you, I call you president ye out of respect, without respect, what are you, yelling at me here? Willow looked terrified, rushed up worriedly, and ordered me to let go. George, let go, if you dare hurt him, you're done for life. Of course, I know what Willow meant, he was able to become a general manager at a young age, but his family has some background. But his face, I just hate it more and more the more I look at it. What should I do? I took out a pen from my pocket. He struggled, and I need him in the lower body. He screamed in pain, bent over and cursed me. George, you stupid young man, dare to hit me. Do you know who my father is? I popped the pen cap off with my thumb wrote dog on the left side of his face, and shit on the right. I wrote heavily, and little drops of blood popped out on his fair and tender face, and he screamed even louder. Willow finally panicked, calling for help without regard for her image. Colleagues quickly rushed in and pulled me aside. Oh my god, Mr. Yi, are you okay? Quick, quick, wet a tissue with water. Here, make way. I'll move the chair over for Mr. Yi to sit. Everyone's flattering appearance made the scene a bit ridiculous. And what I find most ironic is that Willow stood in the middle of the crowd, gently holding the general manager's face, pouting her lips to blow on the red spots on his face. My heart felt like it was being gripped by something, angry, numb, and in the end, I didn't feel anything. After a while, Willow squeezed out of the crowd and glared at me coldly. You really are a brainless person, let's go to the Civil Affairs Bureau now, during the divorce process, she didn't say much, just kept urging the staff to hurry up. After getting the certificate, she immediately took a photo and posted it on her moments of WeChat, as if she had breathed a sigh of relief, suddenly looked up at me and said, George, believe it or not, I have never regretted marrying you. But after all, we are not on the same path, she hurriedly took a taxi and left. I opened my phone. She had posted a photo of the divorce certificate, without any caption, but there were quite a few people in the circle congratulating her, saying things like the goddess has been reborn. Especially her younger brother, who sent three thumbs up. Sister, it's really great, you finally divorced that useless thing George. I suddenly felt like a fool, I started to reminisce about the past. Willow and I were clearly in love at first. Why did we end up like this? We got married as soon as we found jobs after graduating from university. Living in a small house was so warm, sweetly cuddling each other every night. She liked to plan our future, talking about how much money we needed to earn, and how she wanted to give me a cute baby. I really wanted to tell her that as long as she waited for three years, the best things in the world would be hers if she asked for them. But I had sworn an oath, I couldn't say it, at this moment. I closed the WeChat, opened the contact number that I hadn't contacted for a long time, and dialed it. Uncle Sue, I'm divorced. Tell the old man, I want to go home. There was silence on the other end, and the voice became respectful and serious. Okay, young Master George, 
I'll send someone to pick you up after I verify it. After being with Willow in college, I carefully tried to discuss marriage with my father. He was so angry that he smashed an antique worth 800,000 and stood up and slapped me twice. Fool, what's your status? Is she worthy of you? Not to mention anything else, I'd sworn brotherhood with old man you, drank blood wine, and vowed to become in-laws in this life. If you mess this up, do I still need this old face? You can just play around, find a celebrity, find an internet celebrity, give a breakup fee. I don't care, but you can't be serious. I spat out a mouthful of blood, clenched my fist and told him firmly. No, I want to marry her, he frowned, looking out the window, and sighed deeply. My heart jumped, thinking he had compromised, unexpectedly. He turned around and slapped me twice again. Rebel, you rebel. I can tell what kind of person she is at a glance. If you don't have money or power, with her looks, how could you possibly be with her? I nodded firmly again, time will tell the truth. In the end, there was the three-year agreement between my father and me. To take off the status of young Master Wan, and not take a penny. Be an ordinary person, busy with three meals a day. As long as the salary is paid, I work like crazy. He won't use his power to interfere with me, and I won't ask him for help when I'm in trouble. As long as they are still in love after three years of marriage with Willow, he will accept her as his daughter-in-law. It's almost three years. At first, I noticed something was wrong between her and the general manager. The general manager in the chat history was like a fox in heat. Every sentence had a hidden meaning. She swore to me that it was definitely not what I thought. For this, she even said that the general manager likes men. Only then did I believe her. To apologize to her, I even spent all my saved salary, bought her a starter Hermes. She received the gift, but her smile was forced. I thought she was upset about me spending money. Later I found out that she was hiding a more expensive bag in her car. I went home and packed up my things and threw them all into the garbage can downstairs along with the keys. On the side of the road, several luxury cars sped by, the harsh friction sound ringing in my ears. Did Uncle Sue come so fast? Isn't it still a few hours away from the capital? Several sturdy strangers got out of the car, the one in the lead chewed gum, glanced at his phone, and then at me. This is the kid Mr. Yi is looking for. Take him away. On the top floor of the building, the music was blasting, and the neon lights were cutting through my vision. On the sofa by the pool, the general manager was sitting with his legs crossed, one hand on Willow's thigh, and the other holding a cigarette, and Willow tilts her head her smile very rippling. I was pushed to their front by a few strong men, looking a bit embarrassed. The general manager leisurely took a puff of his cigarette and slowly said, I, Makoto, never hold grudges overnight, I'm afraid it will affect my sleep. Willow put down her wine glass, her gaze fell on me with an unclear meaning. She was wearing the latest high-end velvet gown, one shoulder, her facial features dazzlingly exquisite. You're in a good mood, Ex-wife, you even put on such beautiful makeup. No one expected that I would directly ignore Makoto's words. She was slightly stunned and quickly avoided my eyes. But Makoto was even more angry. He stood up and pointed at the mountain of wine glasses on the table. George, it's simple. Drink all these wines in one breath, and we won't care about our affairs. After all, we're about to become old acquaintances to have developed the same land. And there are some things I still want to talk to you about. Ha <laughs> ha. I glanced at the wine on the table, anyone who dared to drink it all, if they were sent to the hospital a second late, would die of alcohol poisoning. Of course, there's another option. He flicked the ash from his cigarette onto his leather shoes. How did my shoes get dirty? You kneel down and lick them clean for me. That also counts as a draw. How about it? I picked up a glass of champagne and drank it all. Do you like other people's wives so much? Do you want to go back and ask your mom if she has time? Makoto's face changed suddenly. He turned his head and looked at Willow. Throw away all politeness. George, you're a useless waste and you still have the courage to show off in front of me. Yes, that's right. I'm interested in your wife. And she's willing. Really. The taste. It's very exciting. Willow's ears turned red. She pursed her lips and added. George and I have nothing to do with each other now. Seeing that the situation was getting heated, the people behind Makoto gripped my shoulders heavily to prevent me from making a move. Makoto exhaled a long breath, looked at me with interest. The next second, 
He picked up Willow's chin, leaned over and kissed her lips. Willow trembled a few times, responding stiffly. Enough. I spoke in a low voice. Makoto stopped when he heard the sound. Hey, I shouldn't have let her divorce you so early, otherwise I could really cuckold you. How about this? I invite you to watch tonight, to be honest. It's impossible not to be angry, but according to Makoto, Willow didn't go that far before the divorce. But her choice, that was just a matter of time. I hope she doesn't regret it, tonight. I also hope that I don't leave any regrets. Quickly breaking free from the two people behind me, I carried a heavy maliciousness and forcefully smashed the wine bottle on the table onto Makoto's head. Do you think I'm scared if I don't talk, taking advantage of no one's reaction? I also fiercely kneed him in the abdomen, with great force. Makoto slumped on the sofa, gritting his teeth. Fight, beat him to death. The scene was in chaos. The women in the pool screamed and scrambled up. Many fighters came from all directions. It seems that Makoto was well prepared today. Even though I had practiced a few moves, I quickly fell behind. After taking a few punches, I turned around and targeted Makoto again. Ki, who was originally watching the show, was startled and cursed. A bunch of waste. Catch him quickly. I originally wanted to hold Makoto hostage and retreat. Willow quietly moved a step forward to block him. George, stop it. I stop. I looked at her with a sneer. Do you know, I might die here tonight. She raised her eyebrows in confusion. Can you put away your male pry? Wakoto can offer to forgive you. It's because I begged for a long time to agree. Why are you so ungrateful? The footsteps behind me were getting closer, and I raised my hand high. She didn't dodge, did her lip and closed her eyes, determined not to let go. I immediately slapped her in the face, directly slapping her on the ground and rolling three times. Just as I was about to continue kicking this bitch, something exploded above my head, and there was a roar in my ears. The next second, I was kicked into the swimming pool. After swallowing a few mouthfuls of water, I swam to the shore, which was already full of fighters. Makoto was helped to the front, and he spit into the pool. Waste him. Pay ten times the money. If anything happens, I'll take the blame. George, I want you to count the days until death in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. There were a few splashes, and someone jumped down. Splashing water everywhere, I endured the pain and climbed up from the other side of the pool. Looking behind me, I ran in the opposite direction. Suddenly, I bumped into a soft chest. You're really in a mess. It was a woman. I was wet all over, and I even got some of her clothes wet. She stepped back in disgust, then sighed helplessly. The next second, she took my hand and ran towards the exit of the rooftop. Several bodyguards over 1 meter 90 were covering our retreat. After running down to floors, she let go of my hand and murmured. What did I say? You should be careful when you go out. Hire more bodyguards. Look at you. Now you're beaten like a fool. I awkwardly touched my head. Thanks for today. She pressed the elevator button, her eyes sparkling, with a playful smile. No need to say thank you. Who are we to each other? This made me feel a bit embarrassed. The pretty woman in front of me who looks naive is called Anna. We've known each other since we were kids. We're childhood sweethearts. Her dad and my dad swore to become in-laws, insisting that we have a child to combine the advantages of both families. But she's always been like a monkey since she was a kid. She loves to bully and beat me. And the key is that I can't beat her. Later I went to college, and she was sent abroad. When we met again, the two families were discussing engagement, and even spent hundreds of thousands to find a good day. But I already had Willow at that time, and my dad was so angry that he kicked me out of the house. Anna didn't say anything after she found out. She just chased me with a tongue knife for three streets. In the end, she wrote on me, couldn't bring herself to do it. Instead, she took out a check and signed a blessing red envelope of one million for me, telling me to roll. At that time, I swore that as soon as Willow and I earned money with our own hands, I would personally pay back this money. Meeting her here now, and in such a mess, I clenched my toes, wishing I could find a hole to crawl into. She blinked her big eyes, thoughtfully thought for a while and said, You owe me such a big favor today. What's the use of just saying thank you? Do something practical. Pay back the money. She smiled, pulled out a tissue and pen from her pink bag, pressed it against the wall and started writing an IOU. I was speechless, 
If it weren't for her, I don't know how miserable I would be today. It seems like I wrote an extra zero, I'm not very good at math, just consider it as a tip, sign it. I took the tissue, the beautiful black regular script was a bit blurred, it clearly wrote 10 million. I laughed and said, your interest is too high, where is the tip more than the principal, but I still signed it and gave it to her. She smiled satisfactorily, showing a pair of cute dimples, and pointed to the elevator door. I walked in side by side with her. She suddenly blurted out, Just now, did your wife kiss someone else? The numbers in the elevator were jumping, and I was embarrassed and didn't know what to do. I lowered my head and hummed, adding, Not a wife, we are already divorced. Oh, her voice is soft, and she dragged a very long ending. I rubbed my forehead, directly looked up at her blushing face. Anna, if you want to laugh, just laugh. Who knew? Her expression changed, she frowned and gently touched my head. Her tone was distressed. I know you're very sad, abandoning the young master's position to fight for an answer. Unfortunately, the investment in feelings does not result in results just because of sincerity. George, you can cry if you want to. I was stunned, and my heart was a bit bitter, but her tone became playful again. Am I right? Cuckled. I was instantly infuriated. This woman, she's here to make fun of me. The elevator reached the first floor. I walked out quickly, and she followed with a smile. Walking to the side of the road, she beat her bright yellow sports car. Do you want me to drive you, for free? The car lights shone on her wet white short sleeves, somewhat revealing the contours. I turned my face. No knee. She quickly reacted, jumped up into the car, and honked at me twice. All right then, I'll go first. Remember to pay me when you get home. My eyes fell on her blushing ear roots and I thought she might have come specifically for me this time. So I directly asked her. She pursed her lips and explained lightly. What are you dreaming about? I came with my boyfriend. He's shooting a movie here. He's a big star, super handsome. I waved my hand, turned around and took a taxi to the hotel. I called Uncle Sue. There's a guy named Makoto. Take over his company as quickly as possible and check his background and relationships. I will do something. Uncle Sue told me that my dad took a private plane to go abroad for business and won't be back for a while. He had already verified the news of my divorce, let me out of the blacklist, and sent 360-second voice messages. I didn't dare to listen. I clicked to convert the text. As expected, he scolded me so much that I felt utterly humiliated. The general idea was that I was a born fool. While other kids were thriving these years, I was having a mental breakdown every day suggesting that I should go abroad to see a neurologist, specialized in love brain. He sighed deeply and lifted the restrictions on me. Finally, he said something that made me feel both sad and helpless. Son, your father doesn't want you to be so useful, but rather to live a safe life. The next day I woke up from the soft bed in the hotel, always feeling like it was a dream. When the dream was over, that person was forever left in the dream. Uncle Sue informed me that the matter was settled. I stretched my muscles and bones and returned to the company. This time, I didn't walk into the main gate with the mentality of working. The colleagues, who were typing loudly on the keyboard looked up and saw me coming in. One by one they stood up. George, you dare to come back. Hurry up and pack your things and leave. Yes. 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 You are so shameless. Get out. They each spoke louder than the last hoping that Makoto in the office could hear their voices and get a good impression. I smiled faintly and walked to the office door. Makoto was frantically on the phone. Are you sick? I invested a hundred million in the company. You want me to transfer it for five million as an apology? No. At least tell me who I offended. What? People from the capital circle? I've never been there. I really didn't cause any trouble, I can swear. Willow thoughtfully brought him a cup of coffee, but he was busy answering the phone and pushed it away carelessly. Coffee and the broken cup spilled all over the floor. She silently slowly squatted down, only then noticing me standing at the door. Why don't you just kneel down to pick it up? She stood up with a complex look in her eyes. I'll give you a sum of money. Don't make trouble here. At this time, Makoto glanced at me, nodded and bowed in a hurry to hang up the phone and walked towards me with splayed steps, wanting to hit me. Little thin man, I was just looking for you. It's hilarious, you delivered yourself. 
I rolled up my sleeves, and he was so scared that he shrank his neck and didn't dare to drop his fist. The colleagues outside kept their eyes on the office, wishing they could stick their ears to the door. I took a few steps, sat in the Kodo's boss chair, and fiddled with the flint wheel of the lighter. The chair is indeed very comfortable. Willow, is this what you want? I looked up and found that Willow had been looking at Makoto. Her eyes were full of humiliation. After all, she was originally another man's wife who provided excitement for Makoto, and now that they were divorced. In Makoto's eyes, she was just a toe that he was somewhat tired of playing with. Makoto's face didn't look very good. He picked up his phone and started to call people. Suddenly, many people poured into the company, all in black suits, both men and women. The secretary, a woman with a queen-like demeanor, was leading the group. She stopped in front of Makoto with a contract. Sigh. Makoto clenched his teeth, tremblingly took out his pen, and quickly wrote his name. The secretary nodded in satisfaction, walked up to me, slightly bent over and handed it to me with both hands. Master George, the transfer contract is ready. Please review it. Makoto stood up abruptly, pointed at me, and asked the secretary, What the hell is this? You call this skinny guy Master George, are your eyes okay? Beauty. The beautiful secretary rolled her eyes, ignored him, and continued to speak to me. Master George, Boss Manuel is hosting a dinner tonight and would like to invite you to dinner to apologize. Makoto jumped three feet high. Are you joking? My dad invites him to dinner. Which drama crew are you from? Willow seemed to feel very embarrassed. She poked my shoulder. As a couple, you don't have to regain your dignity in this way. You have to live in the future. I sign and close the contract. All right, replace everything in the company with new ones and tear down this office. The beautiful secretary nodded obediently and said, Okay, I'll go and do it now. Makoto came over and wanted to find someone to drive me out but his phone suddenly rang. His dad called him. In less than a minute, Makoto hung up the phone. Looking at me with shocked eyes, he pushed Willow in front of me, his tone softened. No. Brother George, you're pretending to be a pig to eat a tiger. If you had said your identity earlier, I wouldn't dare to compete with you for a woman. Is it too late for me to apologize now? This cheap woman is not worth 95 million. Willow looked at me in confusion, then at Makoto. What kind of status can George, an office worker, have? Makoto, looking deflated, quickly slapped Willow and spoke rapidly. Are you even worthy to call Master George's name? Who in the circle doesn't know, the pure love man George, the young master of the capital circle, willing to be a worker for three years for a woman, just to make his father accept this daughter-in-law. He is a legend in our circle who doesn't admire him. He is my idol, do you know, you cheap woman. You don't want such a devoted master, George. I just hooked my finger a little and you fell for it. What do you think you are? Just a dog of mine. And you dared to boss around in front of master, George, he continued. Bro, calm down. It's all a misunderstanding. Look, if it wasn't for me testing her for you, you wouldn't know she's a cheap woman, right? Let's just laugh it off. You kicked me in the groin last night. I still have to get checked today. Can you let me off the hook with the company's affairs? I will look up to you in the future and work like a horse for you. Then he took out a cigarette and with a full face of fake smiles, he brought it over to me. Makoto is indeed a man who can bend. Unfortunately, I didn't take the cigarette, but instead slapped him with the back of my hand, catching him off guard and making his face full of fake smiles. He looked at me in bewilderment. I said, don't try that with me. I'm the kind of person who likes to hit people who smile at me. With your status, you're not worthy to be my servant. Take your subordinates and get out of here. He stiffened for a moment, revealing a fake smile. All right, bro, I'm leaving now. But when he closed the door, I clearly saw the hatred in his eyes. The office was left with just me and Willa. She put away her astonished expression, her voice a bit tight, playing me for a fool. Is it fun? I spoke. Willow, do you have any shame left? There are five relationships in life. Father and son have affection. Monarch and minister have righteousness. Husband and wife have distinction. Elder and younger have order. This is a mirror for being a person. Look at yourself. Do you still have any relationship left? Don't complain to me. You who vowed to spend a lifetime with me. You who sold your appearance for the future and cheat on me. You don't mention a thing about what you've done. At this point you're still playing the victim. Let me tell you, 
I've never wronged you in the slightest, I couldn't say it before. It was my father's request. He thinks you're not worthy to be with me. I made a bet with him. Within three years we will go through thick and thin and make our own way in the world. Then he will recognize our marriage. In the end the joke is on me. If you have even a shred of decency, you should leave immediately and never appear in front of me again. Her gaze locked onto my face. She suddenly knelt down, crawling towards me as she knelt. George, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I really didn't know at all that you loved me so much, that you gave up so much from me. It was me. I was blind. I'm sorry. I beg you to give me another chance, even if you never marry me. I'm willing to stay by your side to atone. Her tears fell just right. The corner of her mouth pulled up into a bitter smile. I turned my head away and took a few steps back. No. I was the blind one, mistaking a cheap item like you for a national treasure. Get out. Never come back. She took another step towards me on her knees. Suddenly the door was pushed open, and a fast-moving figure threw herself at me. The next second, my neck was circled, and a soft mouth blocked me. I forcefully held the person attacking me, and after seeing the face, I was somewhat speechless. Anna, what are you doing? She buried her head in my neck, acting soft and coquettish. Thank you, brother George, for the 10 million check, I'll listen to you from now on. The door was closed, and Willow left in a daze. Anna took a breath, then struggled to stand up from me. She wiped her mouth. Emergency help. Beware of scheming girl. I laughed. Let me say thank you. She sneaked a glance at me. A little embarrassed, she was the one who kissed another man in front of you first. I was helping you vent your anger. This is called treating others with their own medicine. Don't say thank you. Give something practical. Well, your sacrifice is big enough. I suddenly remembered something and reminded her speechlessly. Don't do this next time. You have a beaufriend. She scratched her ears and cheeks for a while, picked up her bag and said none of your business and left. She really comes and goes like the wine. Leaving the company, there was a long line of luxury cars parked on the street, tears of ice shining brightly, as if welcoming me home. The driver opened the door for me. I sat down. Looking at the starlight lamp on the ceiling, it was a strange yet familiar feeling. I opened the car's wine cabinet and poured a glass of wine. I hadn't drunk in a long time. I was even choked a bit. There was a young man with yellow hair on the side of the road taking frantic pictures with his phone, shouting loudly. Sis, does your new brother-in-law's family have this car? Look at that big gold logo. And the body is so handsome. I cracked the car window a bit and the yellow hair guy happened to meet my gaze. His pupils shook. Ha, huh, I must be seeing things. The guy in the car looks like that loser George. Willow pulled him aside, didn't dare to look at me. Her voice muffled, you stop talking. Returning to the villa arranged by Uncle Sue, after dinner, there was an old man standing at the front door. He bowed and placed the gift on the ground. Master George, I'm here to apologize for my son. I glanced behind him, there was no one. He explained with a nervous face. My son is in the hospital. His vital parts are injured. The doctor said, it's quite serious. It might affect his fertility. You see, this whole thing, it's all a misunderstanding. I'm going back to the capital tomorrow. He thanked me gratefully upon hearing this. Thank you, Master George, for your generosity. I won't bother you anymore. After the door closed, my phone started ringing like crazy. It was Willow. Are you there? George, someone seems to have broken into the house, they're smashing and hitting things. I'm hiding in the bathroom and don't dare to come out. Help me, husband. I was holding my phone, about to tell her to get lost, but I deleted the typed words. I was suspicious in my heart, why doesn't she call the police with this time? What is she really up to? I picked up my coat and asked Uncle Sue to call someone. On the way, Uncle Sue was hesitating and stopping wanting to say something. Oh, Uncle Sue, what are you thinking about? I just want to see what she's up to. Only then did Uncle Sue breathe a sigh of relief. As soon as the car arrived outside the community where Willow and I used to live, I saw Willow, covered in injuries, appear in front of the car window. She moved her lips, but I couldn't hear clearly. I cautiously lowered the window, only to find that her clothes were ragged and her entire lower body was bleeding. George, go quickly. They caught my brother, 
They want me to trick you into coming. She pointed to two black vans across the street. I told Uncle Sue to drive away quickly. In an instant, the front and back of the car were tightly blocked by the vans that had been driven over, and we couldn't move at all. More than a dozen people with knives got out of those cars. They rushed up and surrounded us. Willow, not knowing what she was thinking, used her body to desperately protect the car window next to me. She was stabbed down by the people who came, and her blood splashed all over my car window. I was speechless. Big sister, this is bulletproof glass. What are you blocking? I didn't have time to observe her situation. The roar of the engine came from afar. The next second, the dazzling high beam light was coming straight towards us. A violent tin pack sounded. My ears were ringing for a while before I came back to my senses. I looked up and my heart skipped to beat. I saw a yellow sports car hit the tail of the black car from the side. Both cars were overturned on the ground. The inertia pushed the yellow sports car for or five meters knocking down the people on the side of our car before it stopped. The pungent smell of gasoline made me forget to breathe for a moment. I rushed to the door of the yellow sports car like a madman. All the airbags had already popped out. Aina's eyelids were bleeding. Her eyes were a bit blurry. She was mumbling. Emergency help. Beware of scheming girl. Something sharp seemed to prick my heart. I took her down, calling her name over and over. Willow lay in a pool of blood her head tightly against the wheel. She looked at me desolately, her mouth opening and closing, as if she wanted to say something, but every time she opened her mouth, a stream of blood gushed out, her eyes slowly dispersed, and her head tilted to one side. Makoto crawled out of the other car, swaying towards me. No more Master George, I'm going to get you, not even Jesus can save you. I kicked him in the chest. He lay on the ground panting like a dog. You crippled me. My dad actually said, I deserved it. Cut off father-son relations with me. Let his illegitimate son inherit the family business. No, I'm not willing. One police car after another parked on the side of the road. Their arrival timely and completely stopped this premeditated fight. Makoto and his people were taken in. His father took out a letter of severance signed in blood and said he had nothing to do with him. My father and uncle you rushed to the hospital. Before he could steady himself, he slapped me. You need a woman to protect you. You're stupid enough. I'm going to send you back to school. Uncle, you stopped my about to explode father. It took a long time to calm him down. He came over to me and gave me a heavier slap. You little bastard. You're really a mess. How are you going to compensate my daughter? Anna stood at the door and shouted dad discontentedly. I quickly walked over to her to check her injuries. She pressed her temple lightly. It's okay. It's just a skin injury. I upgraded the safety system of my car, but I really lost out taking your 10 million interest, should I sign another one for you? Her cheeks puffed up slightly, her beautiful eyes squinting. Oh, my head hurts, help me to bed quickly. I carefully supported her shoulders and walked inside. After calling the doctor to check again and confirming that she was okay, I finally breathed a sigh of relief. Outside the ward door, my father made it clear. Willow didn't make it. Do you want to see her one last time? I shook my head and didn't answer. He hit the back of my head. Speak, I'm talking to you. What are you thinking about? Anna was injured. Her boyfriend should come and see her no matter how busy he is. I shook my head. That guy is no good. I have to persuade her. My father's face was extremely ugly. His nostrils were gasping for air. He raised his hand and wanted to hit me again. Fool, forget it. I won't scold you. Where does she have a boyfriend? As soon as you got married, she went abroad for further study. She just came back not long ago and got the news of your divorce from Uncle Sue. She drove for five hours to find you. Are you not ashamed? You're beaten like a pig after a long absence. No, you're just a blind pig. No, that's not right. Then what am I? Before my father could finish, I pushed the door and entered the war. She looked up blankly, raised the apple in her hand. What's wrong? Cuckled, why are your eyes red? I walked up a few steps, bent over and hugged her. Her body stiffened, and she laughed softly. Hey, hugging doesn't help, you have to pay. Pay, all to you, I didn't let go, holding her even tighter. Her voice became lighter and lighter, and she pinched my waist with one hand. That's not enough, you like to work so much. Work for me as well, three years, no, six years. I nodded desperately, 
The two old men standing at the door did not avoid their gazes, their faces were wearing smiles. In fact, these slaps were not wronged at all. I once missed a ray of light, and I have to chase the sun for the rest of my life. 